So I need to install a uh, block heater or some sort of heater in my uh, tractor. It's an LS. Uh, it's the 3038H uh, model, just if you're interested. Now, uh, this installation is universal, so it can be installed in a car, truck, snowmobile, whatever else that's uh, water-cooled because it gets installed on the uh, lower radiator hose as opposed to like, you know, popping out a freeze plug and installing it there. This installation is much easier than doing it into the block, you know, through a freeze plug. Uh, so it's, I would recommend it. I did a little bit of research. Apparently it's, some, it's fairly common in Alaska to do this sort of thing. And I'm figuring, well, if heck, if they're doing it in Alaska, then should be good for Michigan. Um, so uh, I went ahead and did the install. Now these heaters run at 600 watts, so that's a significant amount of power. Most of the block heaters that I've seen were more like 80 to 120 watts. So this is a lot more. Um, they get very hot, so you do want to keep it away from stuff. And I would suggest, you know, the first time you fire it up is that uh, you kind of monitor it and just make sure that it doesn't seem like it's going to have any adverse effect with anything nearby. Overall, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. It's not too expensive. It's about 40 something dollars. $45 um, to purchase one of these. I'll have the links down below for the different sizes. There's like a inch and a half, a inch and three quarter, two inch diameter hoses. Now uh, for the hose diameter, that's the internal diameter. So if you measure the outside of the hose, uh, just keep that in mind. You may have to step it down. Um, but for my tractor, it went in pretty easily. It seemed to work pretty well. And again, it gets very, very hot very quickly. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. I appreciate it. And uh, if you like the channel and just want to support it, please subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Um, you know, check out some of the other videos, photography, various welding stuff, various other random photographs, you know, just videos. Um, and so let's get right to it. So step one is to uh, drain the coolant. So for me, behind the radiator right here is the stopcock that uh, opens up. There's a tube that runs down. I don't know if you can see it right there. Um, so I'll drain the coolant out and where I'm going to install it is on this side. Here's the lower radiator hose. goes up into the water pump right over here. Uh, so it says, <coughs> per the ins installation instructions, that you should have it clear of anything that's flammable because it gets warm. This is plastic, so I kind of wanted to keep it away from that, I guess, because I was thinking initially I could stall it here, and it also said install as close to the water pump as possible, which would be right here, but it also said it has to go up to the water pump. So it looks like maybe I should install it right here, and that'll kind of keep it somewhat away from all the plastic pieces, at least a little bit more so than here. So this is plastic, that's plastic, and then uh, this is the radiator reservoir is plastic, so I figure if I get it right in here, maybe it'll be um, just checking be close to that, and then I'll run the the wire. Uh, the power line can come down and maybe out over here somewhere, or I just have it even right here. I'm missing a bolt right there that needs to be replaced. Yeah, I'll drain the coolant and uh, and then I'm gonna cut open this thing right here. All right, so I marked the, the hose here where I wanna cut it. I initially was thinking just a touch higher, but I'm gonna move it down just a little bit just so that it's kinda underneath the water pump a bit so the water as it's heated should flow up into the water pump. That's kinda the idea. Um, so now I'm somewhat debating if I wanna do this with the hose on or off the tractor. I'm kind of thinking I'm gonna do it. <sighs> I want to do it on the tractor, but probably I'm thinking that it might be better to take it off the tractor to do it. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take it off. I think I can get to everything relatively easily enough, though the hood is a bit in the way. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I can go ahead and I can see the, the one here should be relatively easy. So yeah, I'm going to take it off and cut it. And since I can't cut and film at the same time. Uh, it's just stopped midway, so I cut one side. You know, trying to keep it perpendicular to the to the length of the tube is kind of hard, uh, the cut that is. I'm just using my knife. Um, you know, it's pretty sharp. It's not serrated or anything like that. And it cuts through pretty well. So yeah, I just stopped. Just before finishing the second cut, just to show you uh, what I did. I mean, you can use a razor blade or 
whatever, they're they're not too hard to cut through. So when I was looking at it from here, I didn't realize I was so close to this bend. So I'm a little concerned with getting uh, this on and then clamped. Um, so in hindsight, I probably would have uh, cut this down a little further. So right now, you know, here's the, the tube. I'm going to replace the hose clamp at the end because it was looking old and rusty. Uh, so, and I think the orientation I want this is something like that. So let me get this installed and make sure I can get all the hose clamps onto it. Um, now I got, this is the inch and a half diameter uh, heater. I originally accidentally bought the inch and three quarters because the outside diameter of this tube is inch and three quarters. So I thought that's what this was uh, fitted to, was like by measuring the outside diameter, but it's not. So inch and a half. Uh, and uh, let's see if we can get this thing uh, jammed in there, get it all sealed up. Okay, got it installed. Looks like it'll sit pretty well. Um, I'm just going to leave it a little loose right now and just fit it in the tractor just to make sure that this is the orientation that I want. All right, so I'm not doing like a full install, but I just wanted to make sure that the, um, you know, everything was correct, basically in orientation so that when I do, in, you know, clamp everything down that I don't have to try to adjust this. And this is approximately the direction I want this to face is out that way. Um, if I face it this way, I think it'll interfere with the, the hood of the tractor. Uh, and I don't know if I can tuck it in any further because of this sticking up right here. So I think this will be perfect. Let's give it a whirl. All right, looks like it's installed. So now I just got to fill it up with coolant and then I'll plug it in and just make sure she warms up. Okay, so it's installed. Uh, I tried to have all these things pointing away from me. I actually plugged it in just now just to feel if it's starting to warm up. Oh, oh yeah, that's, oh yeah, it gets really hot right back here. Not so much over here. Oh, it's on the back. So basically it heats up all around the outside here. I don't want to touch it anymore because it's getting too hot. Um, I have the wire coming up. It's going to go over here. It's going to come down along here. I'm going to zip tie it right on this uh, uh, rod right here, which is a bracket. And then I'll keep the... Um, the cord down here so it won't be it'll be next to the battery which means it won't be hanging down when this is closed but at least it'll keep it out of the dirt and stuff like that i had a battery tender on here that i just unplugged um so it definitely seems like it's working and my suggestion is to plug it in uh with a timer you know maybe have it kick on every uh i don't know six hours or however whatever interval seems to make sense uh, 600 watts was what this thing's rated for is a lot. This thing is good. Oh, I can see it smoking even a little bit. The heat. Um, I have a little bit of snow coming down. Uh, so I imagine that you won't need it on for very long and just for intervals just to kind of keep it warm enough. And again, that might vary with temperature and such. So this gets really warm really quickly. Um, had it plugged in for, I don't know, a couple minutes. Yeah, that's after a couple minutes, just FYI. This thing is uh, quite the powerhouse, so I would definitely keep an eye on it the first time you fire the sucker up just to make sure nothing catches on fire. All right, thank you. I uh, hope you found it helpful, and again, if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you would like to you know, see more videos like this and support the channel. And uh, thank you again. Bye.